I was like, yeah, you're gonna have to base it on what, however you translated Gordon. <laughs> And they're like, well, thanks. Have you guys heard my story about the localization, the pun localization on the blog post with um, Legionnaire? No. So we like totally does kick ass puns, totally does amazing puns. Um, and one of them, when we were talking about Super Adventure Festival, was he made the pun Bijonnaire. <laughs> And we were like, let's see what Loke does with that. <laughs> and Spanish Loke came back with a Bijanero. Nice. And we were like, nothing's ever gonna nothing's ever gonna be that good again. No. I still to this day don't know what we did with uh, Revenant profession. Uh, Stefan, do you know what did we do with Revenant Loke? What did we do with Loke for the Revenant? Uh, we we're just talking about localization. Oh, sorry. Okay, do you need help with something? What is my title? Praying that sign on. See, this is my turtle.
to say that the bundle plunderer achievement, whoever made that, it sounds vaguely dirty. <laughs> that yep. would be me. Good work, dude. <laughs> straight into the show or are we doing some huh okay Welcome to Let's Play Guild Wars 2, you guys. Um, I'm your host, Ruby, and we're going to do some Festival of the Four Winds today. <laughs> Let me introduce you to our two dev guests who are going to be joining me, Joe and Matthew. Why don't All you guys right. say hi? Welcome to hey, Let's Play Guild Wars 2, you guys. Um, I'm your host, Ruby, and we're going to do some team. Festival of the Four yeah. Winds today. <laughs> Let me introduce you to our two dev guests who are going to be joining me, Joe and Matthew. Hi, I'm Matthew Medina. I'm a designer here at Arena, and I worked on the Festival of Four Winds. Specifically, the Black and Gold Scope of Play, and mostly Crown Pavilion, yeah. Well, we'll check out Crown Pavilion first. We'll see how long it takes us to uh, <laughs> earn our bronze reward. We can do a little bit of both. Um, we're going to start in the Crown Pavilion, though, and beat up some bosses, so why don't we head over there first? Um, we'll see how long it takes though. Let's see. Uh, we had a tiny audio issue that I think should be solved now. Okay. Um, why don't we head over? We will show you guys where to go to get in there. Yeah, um, so there's a couple ways into the Crown Pavilion. There's various NPCs scattered throughout the town. So we can route you there and look for the handy balloon icon. There aren't any examples here. In Divinity's Reach. If you're in Divinity's Reach, there's a door down here you can just walk into, or you can take the fun route of jumping down from above. That's the best way. So, that's what I'm gonna try. You wanna go first? It's very safe. YOLO! Here we go! Okay. All right, I took the easy way and I waypointed while we are <laughs> taking care of <laughs> I didn't want to jump into like the giant pit of death and despair. It's I just figured- It's perfectly safe until the landing. Yeah. 
So, Stick it. Splat. Oh. the landing uh, is the part that I have a problem with. Three points. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Yay. Uh, looks like it's good now on the audio side. Um, do we want to try gameplay again and see what happens? We can all admire the beautiful characters over here. I am no longer getting super loud sound. Yes, there's a bug in the system, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Um, all right, so while we are working on that, to <laughs> never forget bug in the system. That was a good um, title. Hmm? That was a good title. It was a good title. It worked out beautifully. <laughs> depending on your perspective well, you know, um, bait and all that. while we're trying to get that worked out what we were saying i will take a little peek at my map you can get into the crown pavilion by going over to i'm blocking the waypoint i'm such a jerk you can go to the crown pavilion waypoint in lion's arch and you can go right in here there's a little waypoint or you can go to these balloons that joe was talking about look up here oh, that's just my griffin Look up here at the Lion Guard air crew guy for festival travel, and he will give you the option to go to the Labyrinth and Cliffs <laughs> or into or into the arena. But I think we are going to start by going into the arena. Yes. Yes. All right. Let me catch up with you guys real quick. Pop into the Crown Pavilion with one of my favorite load screens. Um, for those of you who did not get to see us at San Diego Comic-Con, first of all, I missed you there. I was sad. Uh, second of all, this load screen we had printed out as the huge backdrop to Bessie the Griffin at San Diego Comic-Con. It was really neat to see that enormous and in real life. I loved that so much. All right. Also, we are playing on the EU side today. We're playing on EU servers. If anybody wants to hop in and join us, that's where we are this time. All right, and we All are right. in game. Boss Blitz preparations are underway. Really? All right, guys, pony up. <laughs> Give hold it gold. On, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, so the way the Boss Blitz works is once preparations start, we have this progress bar to fill. You can uh, increase it by finishing events in the zone like the race event that happens, killing mobs in the zone, or just putting forth money for it. I bought a little. I also brought a little food for everyone. Why, thank you, sir. Feast of Trumpet Steaks. And normally we might try to organize a little and uh, assign teams. There's going to be six bosses to fight down here. Ideally, you'd like to split six ways and have around 10 or 15 people fighting each boss so we can take them down simultaneously but we're just gonna have a good time here and zerg around a little see what happens and i put out a bobblehead laboratory because i'm a helper like that <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to do All this right. with enormous Blitz bobbleheads will begin shortly let's see you have a favorite boss ruby oh that is some pressure i have a least favorite boss uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in the camp with Ruby. Uh, <laughs> Who's your least favorite, Matthew? Uh, Kurai. Oh, really? Really? What? Yeah. I what? I do not like getting trampled. Okay, that's fair. But you know, yeah. you just get out of his way. I'm I'm this not a true. fan of Sparkus. <laughs> I like Sparkus. <laughs> Why? I love Sparkus. Is... He hurts so bad. That's a tough I... crowd. Okay, Joe. Who's your favorite boss? Let's go fight uh, Wigan the Wicked. All right. Wait for me. Somebody else came in the hard way. I will accept your squad join I'll request. Tag up. Yeah. Oh. Nice red tag. So one fun thing with uh, Wigan in particular this year was that previously he was kind of one of the generic pirate models, mm -hmm. and we actually went in and gave him a fancy new outfit. Oh, did we? He looks a little more piratey. But wicked. Yeah, this guy's oh, deal no. is he's laying down all these cannon shots. No. <laughs> on you. This is 
awesome. It's, so you'll it's... need to mm. watch out for that while dealing with his pirate crew. So it's fun how I dove right into all of his cannon fire. <laughs> that was cool. What I like is how it reads between close in and reaching various ranges, so you can't just stay in the position. Oh. Uh Yay! Stop exploding! Just a fun fact that I had. Oh, really? Really? Replenishing. Did the first version. I feel good. We always like Wait, your son is in the game? I've, I've got a few new ones. A little louder, Matthew. You're hard to hear. Okay. Uh, sorry. So, where's your son? Uh, there's a version of my son in Holbrack. Really? Uh, there's another one in... Uh, there's that one. I'll have to go look for it. That's, that's awful. That's a terrible model. <laughs> Well, Do you I mean... need me to remind you of his name, or...? No, 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 okay. I, I, I can't remember where I, where I spawned him. <laughs> it's like uh, walking and chewing bubble down there, trying to fight the boss, dodge This the is true, and I, I am paying uh, close attention to think about anything. So I, I think we all know where Joe's NPC is. <laughs> well, I mean, if you play Guild Wars 1. Yes. Your NPC was the first one that got me, like, all choked up and emotional in the game, so... There's that. I was really, really pleased when I Were saw you? that one. Oh. I had fill everyone in. Uh, yeah, please. I had a character in the Hall of Monuments named that. He was a historian who was part of the Hall of Monuments uh, transfer system. To tell you what, what accomplishments you had on your account versus specific characters. And when uh, Mike Zidrojny was working on the Guild Wars 2 Hall of Monuments, he spawned Kim as the story and again as a ghost. This time he hands out the rewards. So he was one of the characters who was in both games. That made me happy. Yeah, I really love that. So, as lots of players come into this, Joe, I want to ask you about strategy in Boss Blitz. Oh, man. So, um, like I said before... Uh... <laughs> you can just kind of lay back, because lots of people are here, right? Well, so I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> so at the high level, like I said, there's six bosses to fight. Each of them has their own moves and patterns, and stuff you have to take care of. Uh, and our goal is to kill them as quickly as possible. So you've got is it, uh, six or eight minutes to get the gold award, then another you have eight minutes section of time to get the silver award, and at that point you go to bronze. Uh, the words scale down a bit as you go. Honestly, I kind of like coming into a map that's already in uh, the bronze tier, because it's more leisurely and not worry about the timer too much. Yeah. But when you're going for the timer, uh, one important thing I have to say is to always be pushing for the boss kill. Uh, it's really easy when you have a bunch of people show up to start just auto-attacking, or as I'm sure you can see, me playing okay, doing an okay job talking and managing my skill rotation. I'm impressed. Um, it can be easy to get distracted or just start auto-attacking, but these bosses scale up pretty evenly to the number of people fighting them, so you really need everyone to be on point. For those people. Uh, also, every time you kill one of them, the other bosses will inherit their signature skill. So the optimal plan that a lot of players try to do is killing them all roughly simultaneously, so that you have to deal with their shared skill as little as possible. Although, if you drop down to the bronze tier, one nice thing is that all of their shared skills will stop being used at that point. A little bit of a mercy rule. Stopping dead. <laughs> Well, I'm out of Wigan in particular has this way of kind of like uh, getting you to use up all of your dodge energy. 
you got to start deciding which attacks are actually worth avoiding. I definitely recommend staying out of the intersection of all his AOEs. Getting hit by two cannonballs at once is what's really going to do you in. Sounds like fun. Yeah, if you know! I got you. You looked dead. No? Slightly dead. Maybe that was my clone. Either that or you were standing on a dead person, which seems a little cold hearted, uh, yes. but I don't judge. No, I, I, was, I was revived. <laughs> okay. I saw your name and somebody downed, and I was very <laughs> concerned. Well, see, that. this is the funny thing is running the Mesmer, I get a lot of Arena Net employees to come with them. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're I really often get confused for like, it's a Zerg of devs! I'm like, no, it's just me. No. Yeah, if I'm on my Necro and I'm tapped up, I will always be running minions. <laughs> okay. but yes. And then I will have people ask me what we hire the minions for. They get coffee. Yeah, I'll say one of the one of the most satisfying things of this event to me is when you do get into a map that wants to stay organized and get the gold uh, to your report. Um, everybody's communicating, right? They're they're all coming at uh, different, you know, they're calling out different health percentages for their boss, so that everybody knows. Oh yeah, Sparkus is at 50. No, Wiggins at 37. You know, and that way everybody that. can sync up on making sure that they get the same uh, burn at that last 10, 5 to 10%. Yeah, I really like watching that. Yeah, as we were working on bringing uh, the Crime Pavilion back, figuring out the How much we wanted to change all the returning bosses was a big topic of discussion. Because, uh, as you've noticed, we changed out one of these uh, map sections entirely. The uh, ogres were mostly replaced by the White Mantle. And we brought in uh, a familiar opponent from Guild Wars 1, just Star Havlian. Oh, no. You fought as a ghost in Bloodstone Fen and can now fight as a sort of historical recreation of himself in this map. Oh jeez. Down to the last ten percent of Wigan he's gotten And he's mad. Pretty aggro on us. No. Another interesting thing that actually scales on much of these fights is that uh, the more people you have around, in addition to the boss getting stronger, some of their attacks will become different. Like Wigan's AoE patterns get a little more dense the more people are fighting him. To give him a better chance that potentially fighting twenty people. Yeah. Another tip I have for boss blitz that I'm trying to uh, walk the walk on here is that uh, since you know you're going to have a big group, bringing uh, any group support skills you can, like AoE might effects, any AoE buff, yeah. uh, healing for your allies, is keeping everyone up and keeping everyone uh, mm -hmm. heavily boon will make a huge difference. Like, uh, um, when you look down and check how many might stacks you have. Quick question: Does anybody see how has anybody seen how the other bosses are doing? I'm... Oh, I'm sure they're fine. We'll just cool. We'll, we'll kill Wigan. <laughs> 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 Looks like somebody uh, groups on Kurai because he's like, like okay. 20% or so. Yay! We walloped Wigan. Wigan down. All right. Silver reward. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, actually, all looks right. Like people Time are to fighting Kurai, so I will just run. Uh, Counterclockwise myself. Oh, I think I've lost my Zerg by faking. Yeah, I, I just sort of like followed the group with Karai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know Matthew really likes this one, so that's where I went. Also, there was a huge Zerg running by, so I just kind of got swept up. It was so exciting. All right. Well, I'll gather some stragglers here and. Yeah. Make my way towards Paroxys. Ooh, wow. he's a fun one too. Hmm. 
No! Please let me out of the storm of All right, here we go. Hopefully this people behind me. Otherwise, I got this. Godspeed. <laughs> no fear. I love your confidence. <laughs> now, Paroxys has a lot of AoEs going on, and of course he's going to have... Um, um, the one time I forget to remind people to turn their phones off. I know, right? He's going to have um, Wiggins Please. Cannonball AoEs as well. I could outrun a centaur. I am never good at seeing his incoming flame attacks. And there's Karai down. Yeah. Excellent job. Which means we're about to get Yay! So Karai's skilled at shares out. Oh man, don't don't watch me dying over and over again. Um Oh no, Sparkus is his centaur trampling packs who will run around and run you over. Knocking you down. So you'll have to start keeping an eye on the battlefield around you to watch out for those centaurs moving around. Fortunately, uh, they move in preset patterns. So depending on which boss you're fighting, you may be able to just keep the boss in a fairly safe location. No, the other thing is a really garbage at Sparkus. <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's fine, it's all part of the uh, split. I'm pretty end. sure you just stopped yourself from saying it's all part of the fun. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, He's just giving you a hug. <laughs> I'm over on Proxis, but Sparkus Ow. is also a tricky one. It Since hurts. you're fighting on that lava field, he's moving around. You'll have to watch out for flame walls between platforms and just not falling into the lava in general. There's so many dead people over here, you guys. I am just Whoa. straight water at this point, just throwing out healing fields all over the place. Well, like I was saying earlier, that's the kind of thing that helps the team. Is yep, everyone stop it. burning to death. Especially everyone me. chipping in, putting a few boons out, putting a little healing out. Be powerful together. So one thing I want to talk about, um, you were talking earlier about getting gold, silver, and bronze rewards. Mm -hmm. And we had mentioned earlier the Boss Blitz Bonanza for the weekend. One thing that we thought would be fun for the weekend was to throw a few extra rewards on top of the pile. Um, this isn't a replacement thing. You still get your regular rewards for... Ow! Sorry, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was... Not part of that was not part of what I was talking about. I was just a little surprised. Um, <laughs> you still get the regular rewards for each round of boss blitz, um, but if the players as a whole this weekend kill five thousand bosses before the uh, before the end, um, anyone who participated. Wow, this is really hard to talk about while I keep falling into lava. <laughs> um, we're going to send anyone who participated just a few extra little rewards for fun. Um, five celebration boosters and 10 of the Zephyrite supply boxes. Yeah, so... Oh, um... Sorry. <laughs> uh, and the celebration boosters are 100% bonus for an hour or two. Things like Magic Find, uh, World versus World Rank Gained, uh -oh. XP, Gold from Kills, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so the team has been interested in doing uh, some kind of, like, weekend promotion events like that to uh, get players into a particular area and give out some bonus rewards. This is kind of the trial run of uh, that scene. You know, how players manage to do on boss kills and... Yeah. I'm all about bonus how, goodies. How well like we them. can do passing out bonus items. And it should be pretty cool. Oops. All you gotta do is get in there and kill one boss, so... Feel free to have a try at it. Well, I killed one. I'm out. Wait, no, I'm gonna stay in. Clearly even we can uh, muddle our way through a few bosses, so... Yeah. I'm hoping to see the community rise to the challenge. 
should be easy, right? Well, I think <laughs> as as of uh, walking in here, I was hearing we were at something like fifteen yeah. percent of the way to five thousand. All right, I know, so that's pretty good. Let's get the start. I don't know. I'm. I kind of. I like bonus goodies for stuff I was gonna do anyway. Hey, which is falling in lava, evidently. Well, see that, and that's the synergy for Please. me too. Is that do the let's play and get boss kills. I hate so. this guy so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait point. He just like kept punching me into the lava. It was not yeah, okay. Yeah, we actually uh, we actually made him a little easier. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> His lava walls used to be a instant kill that sent you straight to dead. You didn't the even go down. The point here is that I'm bad. And we got some <laughs> feedback about that early on and changed those to just do a severe amount of damage and burning to you. Hello, I'm so here. You got a little better chance to deal with that. It's all about playing hopscotch across the lava. Whether you want to or not. Yeah. I wound up at Paroxys. Welcome to the fight. The other thing Paroxys does is he uh, enrages. It's a little different from the enraging uh, raid fights. It's just every so often he gets real mad. Gets bigger, does more damage. I know the feeling. As one does. Yes. <laughs> he turns red, goes faster. <laughs> uh, oh, like that. I'm, I'm helpless without the uh, giant red ground indicators to show me where to stand. No, please. It hurts. Another thing we actually uh, added to Boss Blitz this time around is uh -huh. last time this whole, the whole Blitz ran. Uh, was before the uh, defiance bars that champions have. Uh -huh. So now Man. we've got the advantage of instead of these bosses basically being stun immune, uh, they've got the blue bar up here that everyone can contribute to with knockdowns and uh -huh. uh, card control moves. And when it depletes, not only is he stunned for a little while, but he also takes takes extra damage. So. You happen to manage to be focused enough to withhold your cool moves for that damage window. It's a good time to unload a little. Um, so... And similarly, a great way to help the team is when that bar is blue and moving down, hit your card control moves. Contribute to that a little, and the faster he gets stunned, the sooner you'll be able to stun him again. Uh, so someone just told me, uh, Stefan was just letting me know we were talking about the boss blitz. Bonanza, I get to 5,000 before the end. All right, there's uh, We are down. at 20% of that 5,000 boss goal. We started this morning at 8 o'clock, and it is... All right. What time is it? Jeez. It's 12.30, so four and a half hours, you guys have gotten to 20%. Way to go. Which is pretty awesome. All right, three bosses remaining. Head in on Justishara Hablian. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying earlier, this section of the arena used to be the... Uh, ogres, jerk. No. And they were always kind of a like, whoa, slightly weirder one, where uh, the theme of this arena is that we are reenacting battles against the enemies of Krita. And the ogres, you know, you fight them a lot, but as an enemy of Krita, they were kind of a like throw in. And in the original boss, at the time. I was asking the team working on it, hey, like, how about the white mantle? Can we get the white mantle in there? And we didn't want to use them because there were plans for them in the upcoming story. We didn't want to ruin the surprise there. But nowadays, uh, the white mantle have reappeared. We fought them again. We defeated them. And they're evil leaders. <laughs> so this year was a good time to bring back the white mantle as a proper boss nice. blitz opponent. Oops. So we replaced the ogre section, our map artist did a great job uh, 
working in this white mantle architecture from out in the Vima jungle. And get to have another Havilian rematch. His signature skill is these portals that he opens under you. If you stand in the portal field for a little bit too long, you'll get portaled up into the air surrounding him. And you'll need to recover and get back to the fight. I very much appreciate that I can open my glider while falling. Thank you for that. Yeah, in addition, uh, well, I'm afraid to demonstrate because I would probably die anyway. But just in case you don't have a glider or uh, just don't have the uh, quick reaction time, we actually did make it so that you take basically no fall damage during his attack. It's more just yeah. an inconvenient thing because you'll get slowed down. You'll get you're effectively stunned since you can't keep damaging him or casting beneficial skills while you're falling out of the air. Plus, uh, since he's portaling you around the arena, you'll probably catch aggro from some of his white mantle minions, especially if you fall without a glider. They're Whoa. such jerks. <laughs> Said as I fall over and over again. Yeah, I know but yeah, we being able to quickly react to that ability and get back to the fight is a really important ability in this particular I know that went through a few iterations where he would drop you and you'd just land splat on your face and go to dad yeah because if you die it was, from, it was pretty hard if you die from falling damage you will go straight to all the way dead your teammates will have a very hard time healing you up so we decided that was a little too punishing Especially if you kill Havlian first, that teleport is the skill that he will share out to the other Ooh, bosses. Yeah. Which can get very dangerous if you're trying to fight, oh, I don't know, say Sparkus. <gasps> when he's teleporting you, because he does <laughs> teleport you into Lumba. That's so rude. Sometimes his teleport will save you from his attack, though, so... Yes. A little benevolent. No! Oh. I was so excited when I learned that we were going to get to fight Justice or Hadley again. Hadley again, really? the Bloodstone fan. Because he's one of those classic Guild Wars 1 bosses. Yeah. Uh, you fight him in a really pivotal moment atop the Bloodstone, when you learn that the White Mantle who you've been helping out are perhaps not such great people. You've, been, you've fought alongside Hadlin before, and as a moment where you learn that he is really kind of a sinister person when he starts killing the Chosen Boy. Top the bloodstone. Don't you channel their souls for dark purposes. You guys are good people. Ask that. how much fun is it to see callback content in Guild Wars 2? I'm always really excited to see yeah. uh, various plot hooks come back from Guild Wars 1. Some of this stuff, uh, so I worked on Guild Wars 1, starting with Nightfall and then continuing to the Beyond content, which was some kind of prelude stuff we did in Guild Wars 1 to start setting the stage for Guild Wars 2. Yeah. And a big part of that was the war in Kryda, which set up the White Mantle control of Kryda being overthrown and uh, foreshadowed a lot of stuff that we knew, for example, the White Mantle were going to return in Guild Wars 2. We'd eventually have to confront them again. And so we set up some stuff like uh, what was happening to the Mursad and how the White Mantle were being tossed out of Kryda and forced to kind of hide themselves. Uh, hey Joe, uh, someone in the map that we're playing on is asking about your history here at ArenaNet. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you've done here through the years? Yeah, so I was hired as a content programmer on Guild Wars Nightfall. Uh, I'm surprised they say they can't find me on the wiki. Um, <laughs> yeah, they looked. Um, and but since let's you're here, see. so on Nightfall, like I just said, I did content programming, which for that one was basically uh, the designers would make documents for the quests and missions and skills and so on, and I would uh, go implement it for them. And then 
We did Nightfall. I, work I mostly worked on quests, a few skills, a couple of the missions in that one. Um, moved on to Eye of the North, in which I did a lot more stuff because I was a little more experienced and did quests, missions, skills, some of the dungeons. Um, let's see if I can think of a few particular fun things you might remember. I worked on the Norn Boxing Tournament. I worked on the Norn Fighting Tournament. <laughs> uh, Sensing a theme. A lot of tournaments. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, I worked on the uh, Hall of Monuments quite a bit. I did not make the original Hall of Monuments, but after I of the North, uh, I was put on the Guild Wars 1 live team, where we maintained a whole lot of Guild Wars 1 stuff over the course of the wait until Guild Wars 2. Uh, so I did a lot of the Hall of Monuments revamp stuff in preparation of Guild Wars 2 to let players add more things to it and rearrange their trophies and show off a little. And then worked on Guild Wars Beyond content. We did the War in Krita, Hearts of the North, and Winds of Change. Among some other smaller content like Mox, who is another person. Oh, Mox. Uh, another golem that I was really excited to see come back. Guild Wars 2. He's a little worse for the wear over the several hundred <laughs> years, but... Hey, he's hanging in there! Yeah, he's still quite functional, still going strong. And that was another one that when we added Mox, we actually had in mind that you would uh, see him again in Guild Wars 2, since as a golem, he's not subject to just dying of old age. Really? I did not... I didn't know we had future plans for him when we first brought him in. Not really much of plans, just kind of the idea that, hey, here's a Aww. character who we'll definitely see again. That's extremely cool. And after that, continued maintaining Guild Wars 1 for a long time, and eventually moved over to Guild Wars 2, where um, I did. I was on the tech design team for a while, and then moved over to working on design with the current activities team, which turns out to be a lot like what I did on Guild Wars 1 in terms <laughs> of implementing the content, although I come up with more of my own designs these days. Thanks. Uh, Matthew, let's ask you the same question. What's that? Give us your entire history. At yeah, give no. me a chance to focus. You do not have to enough time on the live stream. I'm sorry. <laughs> An overview yeah. would be uh, fine. Oh, okay. Every time we have the like employee anniversaries, and I'm like, ah, I've been here for over 10 years. And then someone like Matthew will show up and be like, I've been here for 15 years. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> I'm not catching up. <laughs> wow. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I started at ArenaNet in 2003. Um, at that time, I was a 3D artist, which, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of structure uh, at the time. Because we were a very new company. Uh, you know, Pat, Jeff, and Mo, the, the founders, had literally, you know, just started it a couple years before uh, out of their uh, apartment or garage, something like that. I, I can't remember. Where they, I know they lived at some point in some <laughs> in Brett's, uh, one of our original programmers' oh, yeah. uh, apartment, yeah, and, and worked out of there. What is your employee number? Are you like I don't single remember. Digits? I think I was 12. Oh, that's uh, pretty wow. good. Because there were mine is like 80 or something. Not very about exciting. six artists and I think about four programmers and then the three founders. So I, it might be between 12. And but yeah, I, uh, I did a lot of odd jobs uh, when I first started. I did things like the... I did concepts for the UI. I did uh, concepts for the logo of ArenaNet and Guild Wars. Uh, I did uh, some map and, you know, sort of world design. Um, kind of wore a lot of different hats when I first started. Uh, and then I got into environment art, and I spent about six years uh, doing that, both for Guild Wars, building props, uh, working on maps. Hey, um, we did it. Did it. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Sorry. but no, that's fine. Carry on. We won the boss blitz. Yay, yeah. got boss blitz. Uh, and then uh, about uh, 10, almost 
almost 10 years ago, I, I took a side tour into design. And uh, I started uh, with Guild Wars 2 doing the cities. Um, so I did Holbrack and um, Lion's Arch, the original Lion's Arch, uh, the Grove, and uh, the other cities. And so, you know, I got a, I got a lot of experience right out of the gate as a designer uh, doing some world design and working closely with narrative because the cities were obviously not uh, a lot of combat or activity stuff. It was really just ambiance, and the, I focused a lot on trying to make the, our cities feel like living places. So um, really quick, now that the boss blitz has ended, yes. the pavilion pursuit race will immediately start up, and complete it will actually contribute to starting the next boss blitz. So let's race. It's always fun to do. I have a really quick, like, fun fact while the race is starting. So on this first straightaway of the race, um, something we had a map artist add is this little pile of crates over here. And the reason for that pile of crates existing is that when we were testing this race, at the time, the uh, Roller Beetle had not become available on live, but it was available on our development servers. So we had a bunch of people who were tr who were like, oh, a race, like, I'll try the Roller Beetle. And if you boost out of the start of this race and attempt <laughs> to make that turn, you're gonna have a bad and time. you're not really good at the Roller Beetle, you will fail. And what will happen is you'll go sliding all the way up that hill at high speed, and you can actually you can actually fly through the uh, zone portal and end up in Divinity's Reach. <laughs> so is that to stop you? So we, so we couldn't. I didn't want to make you not able to zone portal while on the beetle, but we put in that little pile of crates to kind of uh, <laughs> act as an emergency barrier. Amazing. Good lord. And it's off. And here we go. So fun I believe fact. we build this in the patch notes as the most dangerous race added to Guild Wars 2. I haven't successfully completed it once. I get dismounted every time. Well, fortunately, you've got a lot of people around. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Matthew, carry on. Check out my ride trip code. Uh, where, where was I? Um, art? Map art? No! Guild Wars oh, 1. Oh, yeah, no. So I, 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 I jumped out into design uh, and worked on the cities for Guild Wars 2, uh, as well as uh, a handful of Explorable maps, doing uh, renowned hearts, events, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then after we shipped, uh, once we went live, I got put on the. Uh, I mean, it's 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 interesting because it was sort of the forerunner of Living World and the forerunner of uh, like a current activities team because we were sort of like we need to make some live events, um, and so we teamed up with. There was uh, one team that went and did the um, fractal. Uh, endless dungeon, and then uh, our team focused on the Lost Shores weekend event. Uh, oh I yeah! Was, uh, I was the principal designer for that, um, and so we had lots of fun designing Karka and introducing them into our world, as well as uh, Ellen Keel, which was my favorite uh, part of working on that event. Um, and then from there, I, I focused a lot. I, I really wanted to get into story more, so I started working hand in hand with a narrative design team. Uh, and implementing story instances for season one of Living World. Uh, and that's kind of where I've been ever since doing various things uh, and the most recent uh, expansion story content. So that's my long journey in a very short wow. of time. That is so much. And I was Holy so cow. close to winning. And then I got dismounted on the stairs right before. I think I saw when I passed you, I was like, ah. this, is, <laughs> this is honestly farther than I've ever gotten. Summarizing telling my long story. History. And I, I just got It's got all part of, of my strategy. Yeah. The race begins before we've even started. Man, I'm just, I'm just hoping to finish this stupid race. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How are you doing? Oh, I yes. did it. Yay! All right. That is the first time. <laughs> Did you get the right. uh... four wind zephyr and faster than four winds? Yeah. Yeah, this was one I, I, I initially laid down the paths for this race, uh -huh. and I think Joe tweaked him uh, the, the checkpoints since then. But the thing that I wanted to, to sort of emphasize was this is a race where you actually don't want to be in the lead for most of it. Oh, really? You actually kind of want to be hanging back, 
Because the people in the lead, they're going to get targeted first by the mobs. Ah, right? yeah. Because they're going to trip aggro and they're going to draw stuff. So I like I like to hang back a little bit, and only in that last uh, sort of run something. as you're coming around the bend in the white mantle area, that's when I put on the gas. And okay. That's when I go yeah. fast because then I'm like, okay, I got. I mean, you don't want to be too far back, obviously, in the pack because you want to be able to overtake the you know three or four, however many people in front of you. But yeah, it's, I always it's kind find, of a crazy race. I always find that I either want to be first or further back. Because yeah. if you're in front, then you're usually outpacing the AoE attacks. That's that also true. Some of those white mantle, for example, throw down. All right. Well, do you guys want to head over to yeah. the Labyrinthine Cliffs? Yeah, let's hop over to Labyrinthine Cliffs. So you can All go right. talk to the Lion Guard air crew over here. Who's okay, but I'm clearing a little inventory. Stealthy, That's incredibly important to me right now. But he can take you directly right to Labyrinthine Cliffs. Hold on, I have to clear my inventory. It's important. <laughs> I have stuff to do. Ooh. Oh, you I, got the. I got uh, one of the Zephyr meta chest. weapon boxes. Yeah. Oh, nice. So there's a lot of rewards you can get from the festival, and one of the primary ways you can get cool new rewards is if you complete the daily achievements. Um, for one. When you complete, if you complete three of the daily achievements during a given day, you'll complete the daily meta, mm -hmm. and that gives you a mystic coin and uh, contributes to another meta achievement. Where once you've completed five daily metas, you'll get a prize box that Matthew just earned, and get your choice of some cool new Zephyrite themed weapons that we got, like that or some other special prizes. Nice. And. There's a couple of different sets of daily achievements, but what you'll find is that there's always um, a few easy ones and then a couple that are more challenging. So you can try to avoid the challenging ones by doing all the easy ones, or uh, if there's a challenging one that you like or is convenient, then you just go for it. One of the dailies today is one of my favorite achievement names, Day Trader. You see, because it's daily. <laughs> uh, um, Daily, but this is for interacting with the uh, bazaar trade merchants over here, where there's a series of merchants that takes various common goods oh. and will trade them for Zephyrite supply boxes, which, if you check the preview window, have a wide variety of trade goods and some ultra rare prestigious items. Um, they're very rare, but Always this could be your lucky weekend. So, Wait, yeah, whenever, it's the, whenever it's the daily achievement, I like to buy a couple. So. Oh, crud. Wait, where'd you go? Wait, which ones now? Well, you can spend whatever you like on it. Here we go. All right, let's see. And you'll always get festival tokens from these, so it's Yay. sort of worth it. Uh, tough luck, guys. I didn't get anything super incredible. <laughs> All right, do it again. Wait, now. I mean, would I be stealing luck from the players if I did get something really good? This is an important luck question. Work that way? I'll, t I'll tell you, I won't name any names, okay? But, but hypothetically, one of our, uh, one of our skills and balance team designers might have easily easily pulled. I think it was the um, chalk egg infusion. Wow. What? That is worth several thousand gold, That'd if not crazy. more. Wait. And they're just like, oh yeah, no big deal. I bought like, you know, 50 of those boxes. And just, <gasps> <laughs> rude. Substantially beat the odds. Yeah, really. Yeah, I got day trader. Yeah, so that's one of the very easy ones nice. as long as you're willing to go buy a couple boxes. All right. Like that. So Matthew, you want to show us around the uh, Labyrinthine Cliffs a little? This is one of our most popular requested maps to return. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been one of the ones that I've been wanting to get back. Oh, I'm sticky. Sorry. Um, what? I'm, I I got my Griffin stuck. Oh. I often I often try to get like really cute and creative with how I fly, and then it usually bites me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was I. 
as I had mentioned, I I'd worked on season one and season two of Living World uh, to some degree, and um, this was a map that we released in season one uh, a couple different times. It came back uh, for a uh, well, it was introduced in 2014, uh, and it came back again later that year, I believe. Uh, or what, what, no, I think it was 2013 when it first came out, right? I believe so. I, I, yeah. Time, I, I'm old. Time just doesn't <laughs> work for me anymore. Um, what even is time? What even is it? I, I don't know. So I was a principal designer on both of those releases, which meant I, I was sort of overseeing the, the overall design along with the design leads. Um, so this place had a lot of history for me because it's a very near and dear to my heart. Um, I helped with a lot of different aspects of making this map the first time. Aspects? <laughs> you said it. I know. I, I <laughs> that was like, an unintentional pun, but I'll, uh, but I'll take that. Do we have like it. a soundboard for these Let's Plays? We should. We should have uh, Stefan back there making like you know, old school radio noise. Um, Man. <sighs> and when we when we said, you know, we really want to bring this map back because it's popular with players, it's popular with us as developers. Um, one of the biggest concerns was, well, we now have mounts, we now have gliding, like, how does that work? So, as soon as I got on the project and thought, you know, this is what we want to do, I, I loaded this map up, uh, got on my Griffin, and started flying around. I'm like, this has to ship. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm still to this day, I just hop up to the top level, dive down, and then buzz the lower level because it's so much fun to fly the griffin in this map sure um all the mounts really uh with the exception of roller beetle and only because roller beetle was uh, in development while we were developing this so we didn't really have access to uh that mount in a finished state where we could you know implement uh mm -hmm. any content for it but all the mounts have sort of the th things that they can do well in here like I i've actually seen people getting on raptors and leaping off of rooftops up at the top level and i'm like that's precarious but they uh they somehow make the the landings um so yeah there's there's a lot of fun stuff to do in this map uh we we've always had this map be about the freedom and joy of movement uh and so previously in the release all we had before we had gliding mounts was we had the these crystals uh which are um, the Zephyrites, who are a uh, sort of a nomadic band of, of travelers that have learned how to harness air elemental magic into these crystals, and then they use the magic in those crystals uh, to move around. And so that was the way we had in the previous two releases of this festival of getting around the map easily, because it's a very vertical map, there's a lot of uh, space to go, and so and it's not easy to do with just our regular movement ability. So we, we created this, and so you have uh, the first skill, which is a wind jump, which sends you way up high in the sky. Uh, the second is a sun dash, which makes you go really fast, and you can go through obstacles that uh, would normally stop you. And then the third is a lightning tether, which sort of allows you to uh, push yourself to areas using uh, lightning as an arcing uh, mechanism. And so we had those uh, for the first two releases, but you know, obviously with mounts and with gliding, those are not nearly as um, unique as they once were. Um, but the nice thing about it is this map just being designed the way it was for those skills meant that gliding and mounts just sort of kind of worked. Um, we had to do a little bit of map cleanup uh, near the upper edges of the of the uh, boundaries because griffin and uh bunny can certainly get up higher than you could ever get with the aspect skills before yeah well, sure there's the collection for uh finding all the zephyrite crystals throughout the zone and i found when i was doing it because uh matthew placed them all and so i was coming through later and trying it out uh, i'm always attempting to forcibly do everything mm. riding the springer but there are times when like you're trying to navigate up some small platform or series of uh, tiny bamboo poles. And I was like, you know what? Just the old jump skill is actually still 
very handy here instead of trying to like slowly turn the springer oh really yeah the uh the the thing that i i found is that the the mounts are great for sort of large uh movements they're they're not so good for very very precise uh movement where the aspect skills allow you to get very very fine degree of uh you know jumping and mm -hmm. landing and so some of the things that i put in here as uh scavenger hunt type items to find it can be really kind of tough to get on some of the surfaces that you need to get to uh with the mounts um people who are really good with mounts probably won't have much trouble but you know i i wouldn't say i'm an expert with my mounts because i often run off of things without realizing like just hey look i'm demonstrating um <laughs> that was very clever of you yes uh i'm impressed my my control over the mounts is is still a little bit in flux uh, i still ha <clears throat> have superb uh control uh whereas i think the at the aspect skills definitely give you a little bit more of that fine control and especially since one of them is ground targeted you can kind of pick exactly where you want to go um, and i actually find that to be a really handy uh, skill yeah i think we've actually tuned that zephyrite jump up quite a bit over the years right yeah, uh, one of the things that uh, when when this festival went away, one part of it remained, which was uh, an activity that we called uh, Sanctum Sprint. Um, and that used the same uh, aspect movement skills for the Zephyrites. And those, because of that, those skills did get some love over the years um, so that they were optimized and, and performed a little bit better. Because we had had some problems with them in the past, uh, you know, technology being what it is, it's always advancing. Even in our game, though we use the same engine, we t constantly get new tools and new tech from the programming team uh, that allows us to make, make the game run better or, you know, do things that we couldn't do before. And so those aspect skills got updated over the years. Um, but even then, I think the last time anyone had touched them was probably right after we shipped the, the last festival. Uh, so I, I, I took another pass at them, uh, you know, worked with some of our content programmers to make sure that they were much more performant than they were. Um, I, I worked with the effects artist to clean up some of the visual messaging. Um, the uh, rings around the lightning uh, tethers are, are something that's new. The, uh, the different uh, effects that come off of you and, and land on the place where you're going to are new so we just wanted to make sure that those skills had a lot more um you know we're up to our 2018 standards basically um i'm gonna interrupt for just a second yeah. because i was watching for this giant he just came over and planted he's planting some pumpkins ah uh, yes and this is the first time i've seen this i'm not sure how many <laughs> players have missed this i knew about it and i've been watching for it um i don't know i actually don't know who did this that was just me um, kind of, <clears throat> I got feedback from one of our um, play tests that, uh -huh. hey, there's this cove back here and it's just kind of empty. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, what can I put back there? And I don't know, I oh, no. I thought we haven't seen a giant in a while. Uh, all right. So he's not the pumpkins. I haven't worked on a giant in a while, so I just <clears throat> to put a giant in there who is just, you know, he's trying to plant his garden and his devourer is just not having any of it. <laughs> they looked or really actually, good he's too. All of it. Uh, oh, sorry. He was like, "Oh, thank you for the snack." Yeah. Yes. One thing that made uh, when we were like last oh, year, kind please, of, I didn't do it, and even before me. that, looking at the idea of bringing back labyrinthine cliffs, one of the biggest challenges was the uh, idea that um, you know the Zephyrites had their tragedy in Dry Top, like. Their giant airship crashed many of them died um and so we we're like okay can we bring this map back like <laughs> how much of the existing dialogue scenes totally don't work anymore and so having matthew who worked on the original version of it mm -hmm. here to put in all of that ambient dialogue refresh that whole side of it was really something that made this possible yes and i'm gonna uh, interrupt because we just got the flying doliax yeah. sign up notification so let's all be tiny doliax yes 
uh, this is a this is one of the only events that uh, made a return. Uh, a lot of the events uh, we wanted this zone to be a non-combat zone this time around, um, as much as we could, uh, and so this was one of the only events that wasn't a combat event, so we kept it. And the other reason why we brought it back is that uh, with the advent of mount technology, um, one of the things that we definitely spent a lot of time prototyping for a Path of Fire expansion were races. Because, uh, you know, you can't really have the full experience of mounts without having some way to compete with mounts. Sure. Uh, so we, we authored a lot of new tech uh, for mount races uh, that we wanted to implement. Uh, and the last time this event was here, it was... A very open-ended kind of race. Um, it I think wasn't... you were delivering supplies up at the top of the cliff. Yeah, right? that, so the, it wasn't... the conceit was that you would get supplies from Trader Marcus and you would have to run it up to the top. And so it wasn't really competition as much as it was a cooperative uh, venture. And this time around, since we had mount race technology, uh, I wanted to make sure that we did it the right way. Because the way it was implemented before was pretty hacky. Um, we only had guild races at the time, and uh, the, the stuff for that wasn't uh, wasn't really designed for uh, big open world events. Oh, look at all the cute little baby doll yaks with the hearts. And they're all happy. Everybody's feeling the love. Everyone's love. Yeah, I like this race because it's uh, <clears throat> it's one of the only ones right now that uh, kind of enforces using its particular mechanic. Yeah. You won't be able to mount up once you're a tiny doll yak. <laughs> this is absolutely one of my favorite things from last Festival of the Four Winds, and I'm really glad to see it come back. You'll get to uh, try to steal uh, I and Matthew's, Matthew and I's advanced techniques for the Dolayak mm. race. <clears throat> I see a keel supporter in here. Heck yeah. Yeah, there's a throwback. One of the last times this festival was around, we had the uh, pirate Yay! voting. Now, see, Matthew is already way ahead of me, but he is clever enough to have gone and collected the crystals ahead of time. <laughs> he knows what's up. You know, the funny thing is, we, we got the feedback that, oh, that's going to be too much. People are, you know, and I'm... Which I thought about am I? <laughs> it being too much of a cheat, um, but the truth is, it's hard to control that. <laughs> sun dash sometimes it is and you might end up actually putting yourself out of the race by using it so yeah i have a i have a hard time oh, with that hit by rock well you know sometimes that kind of thing is just a uh, you don't want to take the strategy away from players yeah exactly i'm sure there are people who are very much more pro than i am who would have no problem controlling themselves through yeah, now this is one of the toughest sections for me, these three jumps. Ah! Oh no! Fortunately, yep. there's that net down there. Yep, right? the safety net. I fell and it hurts. And right, then right along here, I'm always afraid to use the light dash because there's railings, but I mean, there's also nothing under you, so. Okay. How much um, do you want to. Oh gosh, I'm so bad at this part. Here we go. It, oh my goodness. Now, here's oh, I did here's it. my advanced wow. technique, though. There. Jump up behind this waypoint and get it from this side. This is embarrassing. Save a little speed. Somebody's already done? Yep. And I'm over here, like, stumbling around. And I got myself I'm so stuck. confused. Uh, somebody just told me that we are at 25% of the boss blitz goal. Wow. Hey. I say somebody like it's not Stefan. Stefan just told me that we were <laughs> at 25% of the... It's not a secret. All right. I'm going to finish in last place. I don't know if it's now. Nah, it's cool because I'm still back here. Calls that out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I love seeing all the little Dolyaks running forward. <laughs> the little tails wagging. They're so cute. I am when you when they run though. It gives me concerns about where these hearts are coming from. Another incredibly important <laughs> feature that we added to Labyrinthine Cliffs is. You can now sit on the chairs at the bar. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Thanks to the addition of chair sitting technology last April. Yay for chair tech. Oh, I think And I while you're here, line. you can talk to the bartender. Yeah. Folam. About the uh, 
Quaggan performer who used to put on shows here. Oh. The enigmatic Kukuchu. Can we talk about the sad tale of Kukuchu? We can. We can talk about <laughs> poor Kukuchu. We can go see poor Kukuchu. Yeah, oh, no. let's go see him. I think by this time it's no spoiler anymore, so. Yeah. I will follow you. There's an extended collection that I have not completed to find. I'm working numerous on Numerous flyers suggesting you. Kukuchu's life. Yes. Uh, if I have Since one regret, we last saw it's him. that we didn't have enough uh, resources to to put it all together in a single collection <laughs> of text. Matthew. That you could then read the entire story for yourself anytime you want. Well, there's always next year. There is always next year. So. Matthew, I'm following you to get to Kukuchu, and you've gone in like 17 different directions oh, in I'm the past sorry, 90 I'm seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. I'm like, clearly we're going somewhere. Yeah, so uh, Kukuchu <laughs> is a collection where you collect these flyers. They're spread. There's 30 of them spread all over the, the um, festival. And they all tell the story of poor Kukuchu, who used to be a fire-breathing quaggan. And yeah, he, he still is a fire he, Yeah, I guess technically he still is, but he's sort of... But he also used to be. He fell on hard times after the last festival ended, and he ended up trying to reinvent himself. Uh, mostly unsuccessfully, and he ended up oh in, in some very, very bad shape. Uh, and the end result is he ended up here, incarcerated <laughs> in the in the cliffside. Poor Kukuchu. Oh, sweetie. I know. Oh, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, viewers. I do not have the Griffin unlocked, uh -oh. and so I cannot get up there. Oh. Well, there might be some way. I think I see Actually, some scaffolding I think here is. that I could navigate. Throw a rope down to Joe. If you can glide, you can definitely get there. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I'll look yeah. far. Oh, sweetie. Poor Kukuchu. And you might be able to rent the griffin over there. And he's yeah, fine, you can totally right? rent like, a griffin. Like, Kukuchu's story continues, you know? Yeah, I mean, Kukuchu is not... It's, I think it's not the last we've heard of Kukuchu. I will say that. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? It's... Somebody wants to know if there's a story for the ghost quaggan, and I think they're talking about Drubert. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, there's there's actually there's two there's two yeah. ghost quaggans in the zone, so I'll talk about one of them. Uh, Drubert has become a recurring festival character over the last year. He was originally I see a, a long time crystal. ago a quaggan that you met in Drytop, who desperately needed donations to. Uh, For why though? Uh, to <laughs> to to buy water, I think. Hopefully. Sure. Uh, but he's in kind of a bit of a spot out in dry top as an aquatic animal who has somehow ended up in the desert um, and he needed your help and a lot of players very generously donated to Drupert. I think we calculated there's some absolutely fantastic amount of gold that he raked in over the course of his life there because later uh, spoilers I'll dance around exactly but uh, <laughs> a tragedy befell dry top and in the midst of it you could discover that uh, Drubert had not made it out in time. And p players believed that was the end of Drubert's saga, but he later reappeared in Halloween as a ghost. Now, He's resilient. Now asking players for candy corn for an unknown purpose. <laughs> and since then, we decided he was a great character. We made him a recurring character in festivals where in various festivals he asks for different items particular to that festival, including his infamous appearance in Lunar New Year when he asked for uh, red bean buns. And, Dude, and, Drupert got greedy! And massively spiked the price of that item. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, in punishment, well, uh, the next time he showed up during Super Adventure Box, he had been thrown in jail. But now, having served his time, it appears that he's trying to turn over a new leaf. And he is acting as a merchant here in Labyrinthine Cliffs, selling items. Uh, not particularly good items, but you know. <laughs> he's trying his best, and, and, all of us, and all of us need to help him out. If you did donate Super Adventure Box coins to him while he was in prison, you get a little bonus dialogue here where you can oh, really? learn about his efforts to, you know, come back from the brink and better himself. Damn. 
It's, yes. it's really it's really moving, except that uh, in Halloween I anticipate he will be back to begging for candy corn, which is, uh, you know, maybe someday we'll find out what he's been doing with all the candy corn and snowflakes and red bean buns and continue coins. <laughs> I just picture him building like a huge fort out of them. It's like a fort out of all this crap we've been giving him. <laughs> and he's just sitting in it drinking. But there is another ghost squawk in the zone. Really? There is. I, I there's... didn't even know about. Yeah, I'm, out, I've actually. known about it for ten seconds. Yeah, this is this was you know uh, I'm a big fan of old school games with Easter eggs and and that kind of thing, and so I always try to put something in that's like really stealthy. It's super super low impact. Um, but basically, I, I, I saw that uh, our map artist had added this really neat shipwreck over here, and I thought, well, what am I going to do with a shipwreck? Um, and so I thought, well, I could do like pirate treasure or pirate thing, and I think, no, like Quaggan, right? Like, sure. Quaggan are our go-to for any underwater stuff, and I love them to death. So uh, I put a dead Quaggan. God, Matthew. <laughs> and uh, sorry. <laughs> Wow! Um, I know that turned dark real quick. Um, I basically, did not there's, see a, that there's a there's a there's a quaggan under here who who had an untimely end, and there's a lantern next to him that oh. is glowing slightly. And and uh, if you oh, swim up next to it, <gasps> oh. you can see that you get a faint radiance around you, and it and it clings to you for a small amount of time. Um, and there's really no directive for this other than if you look carefully you can see oh look there's another lantern over here so let me swim over here where i got the radiance on there and oh look it turned that lantern on and so it's basically a breadcrumb trail that you just have to take this faint radiance glow from lantern to lantern and it goes in a very long circuitous route across the entire underwater section of the festival and that was really my intent uh, with, with adding this to the game as well, is that when I asked our map artist to, like, I said, uh, hey, we now have, huh. we, we just released the, uh, you know, the swimming infusions and all that stuff for yeah. like, underwater content. And I was like, we need to, like, make the underwater, like, really better than it was because it was pretty plain uh, in, the, in the first couple of releases because there wasn't much to do in the water. Um, and so our map artist, as our map artists tend to do, went way above and beyond uh, and made this underwater section just amazingly complex and, and deep and rich. And so I wanted to have a reason to kind of push players out and explore it. I'm so shiny. Um, and so the hard part is finding the lanterns because um, they're kind of small and they're just far enough away that you're like, hmm, is that next lantern in the sequence or is that just a you know a pixel um <laughs> so nice yeah I, I i don't know if there was any you know th there was some discussion about whether i should have added an achievement or should i have made this a more uh sort of player facing objective and i thought no again i i, I wanted to have something in here that was just really you do it for the sake of doing sure. it. Sure. Um, I love when there's content that is really just all about uh, having fun with the game and doing something, not necessarily for any kind of reward. The the, the journey is the reward. Um, so. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, here's a thing in chat that I cannot resist asking about. All right. I hope they talk about the cow. I hope they talk about the cow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I wouldn't ask, but I know that you're okay with it. Yeah, we can go visit the cow. Where's the um, cow? The cow was really just... Uh, it started as I got feedback that uh, the other thing the map artist had done is obviously when we brought this map back, we wanted to make sure that we accounted for the world map and, and what else was outside the map because before Labyrinth Eclipse was kind of in a weird spot where it, it, it was in the world, but it wasn't really part of the world. It was sort of in this spot that didn't really quite reflect everything around it. And so we wanted to have a little bit more fidelity this time. Um, and so we, we had the map artist add the landmass that was 
there on the on the southwest sure. side of the map. Uh, and he added a couple of new uh, sort of land masses here. And I got feedback that, hey, this is a cool space. And you can use mounts to get up on it. So, Oops. like, what are you going to put up there? And I thought, I, I don't know. Like, it's... Cow. There's, there's not much up here, right? Like, it, it's there's no real reason to come up here. Um, and so I, I floated this to a couple of our design friends. Uh, and uh, Connor Fallon, who I work with on Path of Fire, shot back and said, what if you just put a confused cow? And I said, you know what? There's a reason why I consider you my 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 best friend in this company right now <laughs> because holy cow holy cow do i love that idea so yeah we ended up with a confused cow um, i love it as to how you got up here oh, there's no. a subtle hint but that is all i'm gonna say it. um but you know he's confused i mean he's a cow and this is certainly not a place where cows would be so i think it's natural for him to be confused sure we can all know. join in his confusion. Where do you? Well, I'm. Where do you go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> is that another mount or? All right. So that's that's why because something needed to be here and. You were yeah, obliging. and I mean, I. But I will also say, it, it, I I I can almost guarantee you this is not the end of the cow story. Ooh. Oh no. This is not the end cow of the continuity. cow story. Cow continuity. Cow continuity. Cow you know, they, at the end of the, the movies, they always say, you know, so-and-so will return. Confused Cal will return. Confused oh Cal That's all will I will return. say is... And you know what? That is a good place to finish up for the day. All right. All, all right. right. <laughs> you guys enjoy the Boss Blitz for the rest of the weekend. You yeah. are a quarter of the way through Boss Blitz Bonanza. Enjoy Labyrinthine Cliffs. This is our last weekend before the Festival of the Four Winds ends on August 14th. Yeah. So thank you guys for hanging out with us for the past hour or so. And we will see you next on the next Guild Chat. Thank you guys for spending some time. Yeah, it's been All great. Right. Yeah, thank you. All right. Have fun. Bye, guys. I finished one of my last boss blitz completions. Awesome. And I'm all signed up now for when everyone hopefully completes it. Sweet. Sure. The cow is... Okay, here's a theory. The cow was riding on an airship and it was going to be lunch, so the cow jumped off. It saw an empty glider and rode down to the cliff. Fantastic. <laughs>